Proverbs 5, verse 19. It said, let her be of the loving hind and, ple- and pleasant role, let her breast satisfy thee at all times, and be thou ravish always with her love. And that brings me to the next point. Celebrate each other's love. Be thou ravish with her love. Celebrate each other's love. Recognize the love that you have, your spouse have for you and celebrate that love. Point out that love. Uh, one of the things where I see the love of my wife is I, I never forget when I, when we first got married, I was younger. You know, I was crazy. I, I would travel all over the place. I went to this, it was like three or four different states, right? Mm-hmm. Three or four different states in, in like two years. I traveled to like three or four different states and I was preaching everywhere, preaching, planning churches. And my wife followed me all the way through and it was not easy. And I know it was not easy, but she came along with me anyhow. I never forgot that. That commitment that she has to me, that loyalty to me, I see it as an expression of her love. And I celebrate that. I tell her about it uh, all the time. I repeat it back to her, how she followed me wherever I went and, and still follows me wherever I'm going. Uh, and that expression of love, I celebrate it. You need to find where your spouse is showing you love. It could just be in the thing that she does every day. And my wife, everything she does to me every day is an expression of her love. Uh, how she takes care of me, um, the things that she does for me is an expression of her love. Wives, that, that husband of yours go out and he makes sure he works and he provides for the house. That's an expression of his love. He may not be great in a lot of other things, right. but he's expressing his love in continually providing for that household. Celebrate each other's love. Now, I'll point this out. There's a um, a writer, a doctor, he's actually a marriage counselor, and then he, he wrote the book on the five love languages. You must have heard about that. that Dr. Gary Chapman wrote on the five love languages. And I, I, I don't, it's either like um, showing affection. I think I have it written here. Yep. There are words of affirmation, acts of service, receiving gifts, quality time, physical touch. Those are the five love languages. Words of affirmation, acts of service, receiving gifts, quality time, and physical touch. Now, Dr. Gary Chapman in his book, he talks about the fact that we ought to recognize what our spouse's love language is and then try to serve them in that particular area. For for example, you may, as a man, like physical touch, but your wife may prefer quality time. And you may be doing all the touching and she's not really feeling the love because she's looking for that quality time. And so he talks about the fact of recognizing what's your spouse love language and trying to meet them in that area. But I want to say something to that, or I want to add something to that. If you see your spouse trying to show love in any of the long languages, whether it's what you prefer or not, celebrate it. So here's your husband buying you a gift. (laughs) You're not into gifts. You know, not every woman is into gifts. You're not into gifts. Don't dismiss the gifts. Don't complain about the gifts because, well, he did not give you words of affirmation. He he did not tell you how great you are all the time, but he's buying those gifts. So even if he's lacking in telling you how great you are, but he's buying those gifts, instead of complaining about the fact that he doesn't say enough how beautiful you are, why not celebrate the fact that he buys those gifts? Make a big deal out of it. When you celebrate the fact that he buys those gifts, that will open the door so that he will do the words of affirmation. Mm -hmm. And so what I'm saying here is that instead of trying to get your spouse to do, to do your love language, celebrate what they already do. Celebrate the love that they are actually showing you. Recognize the things that they are doing. So you could have a situation where a wife is saying, you know, I don't feel like he loves me. He never does anything. He loves me. And here's the man saying, what are you talking about? But I provide for you all the time. I'm committed to you. I don't look anywhere else because to that husband, him showing loyalty is an act of love. And so what you do, instead of complaining about the fact that he's not doing something you want him to do, recognize what he does and celebrate it. That will make your marriage happier. It'll make your marriage happier if you recognize the things that your spouse is doing to show love. So the scripture says to the young man, 
be the ravish with her love. In other words, be consumed with her love, be intoxicated with her love, get drunk with her love. Do you recognize where is my spouse showing me love and get filled up with it? Celebrate it. Talk about it. And guess what? Any other era where you're looking for love, it will come if you do that. Because the Bible says it's better to give <laughs> and to receive. So if you are celebrating what your spouse is doing and how they're showing you love, you know, somebody may be thinking, I don't see how my spouse is showing me love. Well, they, they, they haven't left you. Mm-hmm. They're still with you. Mm-hmm. That's one demonstration of it. Yeah. But why would they be there? They must have some level of commitment to you for them to still be there. Then celebrate that. Celebrate that. If you only recognize where things are short, it's very hard to have a happy marriage. It's very hard to have a joyful marriage. Recognize, celebrate each other's love. This is how you cultivate a joyful marriage. And I, I, we use the word joyful in, in, instead of happy because, you know, people think of happy in all kind of ways. Having a happy marriage don't mean that we have to be giddy all the time. You know, uh, it doesn't mean you look at this couple and all the time they're giddy. You look at this couple and they're always going out somewhere or they're, they're always at the theme park. They're always doing something. No, I mean, people have different personalities. People have different ways of expressing themselves. You may see a normal couple, nothing exciting about them. But they, are, they enjoy each other. They enjoy their relationships. That's the key. The key is not to say doing exciting things or what may seem exciting to you. The key is making sure there's joy between you, joy in that household. And joy is more for internal thing. Happiness, people show happiness, think of happiness, they think of the outward expression right. of happiness. And that's sometimes, sometimes that happens where people... You know, we'll see a couple. Yes. And because, you know, they have their own, uh, you know, they, they have within their own self their views of what a happy couple should be. Mm-hmm. And because the couple is not like, you know, constantly going to the park. Right. Constantly, you know, playing with each other or constantly whatever. And then they take that, whatever their observation is, and mm-hmm. they take that and they make a conclusion. Yeah. Out of it. Yeah. And sometimes it's a false conclusion. It's a false confusion. Just yeah. look around us. Most people, all right, even uh, not only in the church, but also in the world, you can see, watch Hollywood, for example. Mm-hmm. All right. These people look happy, right? You see mm-hmm. them on the TV. They're all dressed up, look glamorous. Everything look very good. They have the money. They have the everything. And yeah. they have the face, you know, everything. And everybody want to photograph them across the world. But guess what? Their marriage never it works out for a long term. They divorce. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, you could see them this week and everybody look good together. And then the f- next week you just hear on the news, oh, so-and-so is getting divorced. So I'm saying that to say, you know, just because people look happy or give us a lot of people is good at, you know, giving a, fa- a, fa- a facade, like, you know, mm-hmm. I'm happy, mm-hmm. you know, and, and stuff like that. And they're not. They're yeah. really, really not. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So just looking at it is not enough, right? To yeah. just say, oh, they look so very happy. Because a lot of time you'll find the people that look happy and always looking like everything's together are the one that has the brokenness. Yeah. Um, the the, the fact is that many, many people in their marriage are, they're suffering in their marriage at home. They're frustrated. Uh, they're unhappy. And then they walk into church with a big smile on their face, hands locked together. And it and appears, suffer, yeah. they give the appearance mm. that, okay, they, they are joyful in their marriage. Right. But it's just a, a, a show. This is, is, you're just, there's just expression of happiness. So like you said, those in Hollywood, they got to put on the show. They got to look right. happy to the camera. So, because someone is always watching, but it doesn't mean that that internal joy mm. is there. That internal joy is missing. And so that, that's why we use the term joy. 